Welcome back hockey fans, Chris Durrell here with Rotopros.com to bring you another DFS NHL video. Today we're going to be looking at the slate on Thursday, January 21st. Before we get into that, if you're not a member, um, please head over to Rotopros.com. This is where you're going to find our free article content, a little bit of a uh, little video on our YouTube channel as well. You can find it there, um, telling you a little bit about our community chat in Slack, and you can get uh, your premium content by clicking the yellow sign up button top right hand corner grabbing a weekly monthly or yearly subscription 515 or 150 dollars and you're going to get your free trial there if you use promo code rp50 you get 50 percent off after that free trial is up as well to check us out so it's pretty good value there. It gives you access to all of our cheat sheets uh, for all of our sports. We've got NHL, NBA, UFC, NFL's wrapping up here. Um, PGA is back. We got the Daytona 500 in about three weeks, so NASCAR is going to be back. Uh, we cover college sports, League of Legends. Uh, if there's a sport out there, we have a sheet for it. We have analysis for it with our DFS coaches in Slack chat. You can get one-on-one -on -one coaching in there as well. We share pretty much uh, up-to-date news as it comes in throughout the day leading up to lock. Very important. Uh, getting an edge in fantasy is a lot harder than it used to be. Uh, so that's where we really put our time in is in that Slack chat. So join us today. Grab a free trial. With that, let's jump in and have a look at today's NHL slate. We are going to to start on the NHL sheet we will go to the team matchups tab first of all we have two teams playing back-to-back -back, Montreal Vancouver they were in a 6-5 slugfest last night uh, Vancouver coming out on top there that game's got a six and a half over under understandably um, not a hundred percent if I'm going back there yet fully um, like a full you know game stack or not I'm definitely gonna want a couple pieces as you can tell, Vancouver's defense just hasn't been very good. Montreal, uh, Price didn't look good last night. He probably won't be getting the start tonight, so they're going to be running on a backup, so maybe there is some merit there. Um, definitely going to want a piece of Montreal. Is probably going to be my favorite there. And I start every day just looking at the team matchups tab, narrowing down these teams. So today I'm looking at four max, uh, three for cash, four max when it comes in terms of building some GPP lineups in there as well. So the first couple of stand are obviously Tampa Bay, number one offense so far. They're a favorite. Uh, on the road versus Columbus, their third in scoring chances so far. This will be their first road game. That's why you see no data here. Um, this is Tampa Bay's first road game, Columbus's first home game. Then you got Philly and Boston tonight. Boston's home. Oh, I need some coffee there. Home opener. Uh, Philly's first road game. Um, not too interested in that game. Five and a half. Over under, I feel it could be low scoring, could be some goalies to maybe take advantage of in GPP, but don't, both teams don't really, there isn't a lot of shots there, so the upside's kind of limited. Um, New Jersey and Islanders is interesting. I think we can maybe make some GPP pivots here. They're both top five defenses, though, so keep that in mind. Um, it is early in the season. The sample size is small, but both have played very good defense, not very great offense so far. So that tends to lead to very low score. And if anything, I like the bet uh, under um, in this game tonight. It looks like it's going to be Varlamov versus Blackwood. Winnipeg, Ottawa, definitely one of my favorites. Winnipeg for sure is going to be one of my core teams. Uh, this game is the second highest over under. Winnipeg can score. Uh, Ottawa's defense has struggled, so I'm definitely going to be looking at that. I talked about Montreal, Vancouver, and then Colorado, of course, uh, facing LA again here. And the, the over/under is five and a half, I think, here, just because they're not expecting uh, the Kings to to really score much at all, um, and their defense has struggled while Colorado's offense has been awesome so far. So that's what I'm looking at on the team tabs here. Uh, we'll jump into goalies here and. As you can see, the new overall rankings and stuff are up. Like I talk about in chat, like I talk about in uh, previous videos, I'm only going to rank for goalies the probable goalies. Um, there's none confirmed as of now. Um, as of doing this video, I should say, that will be updated throughout the day. So make sure to check back for the rankings, who's confirmed, who's not. Right now, what stands out to me is right at the top, we've got Grubauer uh, for Colorado facing LA. Huge favorite. Uh, we've got Vasilevsky. Facing Columbus, not as big a favorite, but but a nice favorite um, on the road. If he was at home, he'd probably be in the minus 200 area, I would assume. Um, he's been good this year, 950 save percentage over two starts. And then we got Varlamov, two straight shutouts to start the year. Facing New Jersey, who, like I said, is struggling to score um, a lot of goals, although Jack Hughes really broke out last game. So I like those three. Varlamov, I think, is in play on both sides. He's the cheapest of the three on both sides. 
Um, and then Vasilevsky is cheaper on DK, and then Grubauer is cheaper on FanDuel. That's why I've labeled them that way. Um, I am game with all three of those tonight. I don't think you can, you know, there's a chance that uh, one of them or two of them may not start just with these rotations with this uh, condensed schedule, playing the same team on, you know, back-to-back games um, on the schedule. Um, I talked about a little bit. I think I don't mind, you know, for, I'm, I mostly play cash games. Um, I say that a lot. If you're looking for GPP, though, like in NFL, I'm always talking about finding a player maybe in the same range or the same game where a, a very high-owned player is going to be and just pivoting, like taking a quarterback in a game and going to the other quarterback. Uh, one's going to be 60% owned. The other one's going to be 5% owned. Um, in GPP, you can maybe make one pivot lineup, contrarian lineup, where you go with the 5% because if even if he doesn't have his best game, but the other quarterback is average or slightly below average, then you're going to be ahead of like 65% of the field. I think that's the same for hockey when it comes to goalies. Pitchers is the same for baseball. So what I'm looking at tonight is Varlamov's probably going to be the highest on goalie, I'm guessing. Um, I like it for cash. I'm not going to pivot away from chalk in cash games. Um, I think that's a good way to go and find out uh, what you missed in terms of picks for cash games, um, as well as maybe what you reached on, is just go break down your lineup and look at the percentages. If you've got uh, guys that are 1%, 2% on in your cash games, um, maybe look into, go back and look into why. I'm going to be doing more videos. I'm going to be breaking down my own personal cash game lineups, um, looking at these exact things um, in terms of ownership. Because if you miss on a guy, a guy goes off and you go look and he's say 30 40% owned in, in cash games and you didn't have them on your radar and this has happened to me already this season I can't remember the player but it has happened um Adam Fox on defense a few nights ago was like 40% owned in FanDuel cash and he wasn't on my radar um he's a good player I get that I have him in some season long leagues I didn't have him on my radar for DFS and it cost me um so looking and breaking down those lineups is just as important as making the lineup so that's some videos I'm going to be doing here in the future Back to the picks, let's jump into centers here. So I pretty much, I've only highlighted the teams that I talked about in the beginning. So right off the bat, Nathan McKinnon, he is the most expensive by quite a bit, There's quite, a, but he's still going to take on ownership. He's got elite shot volume. Um, this is a little bit lower than where we've seen it the past few years, so I think that eventually starts coming back up too. But he's easily the best, uh, most offensive, highest upside center on the slate. So he's my number one. Braden Point for points per dollar. Uh, is definitely going to be up there. I don't think we need to force McKinnon if we, depending on the value that arises, what goalie you're going to use. If you don't want to go with McKinnon and pay right up for that, uh, you know, looking for three, four value plays, I think you still can. I'll talk about some value plays coming up here. But going balanced with Point and Horvat makes a lot of sense as well. I've been on Horvat pretty much the whole season. Same with Point with Kucherov out. His shot volume was way over. Um, where it was last year, he wasn't really a guy we'd look to for shot volume, but it is there early in the season, so that's good to see now that he's taken on more usage. Uh, top line center, top power play. Uh, Horvat, second line, top power play. He gets a lot of shot volume as well. It's a little bit lower here, um, but that's still a little bit above average for the price point. And then if you really want to punt, if you're going with McKinnon, um, and you want to go with Rantanen with McKinnon, uh, Sorelli or Steppen makes a lot of sense as one of those punt values tonight. Even with the utility spots on both sides, you can still go with like a McKinnon point and then grab one of these lower guys and go three centers if you want. I generally don't go three centers. Um, their shot volume is generally lower than your wingers uh, or combined shots blocks with your D-man. That's why um, you see, you know, like in a lot of optimizers out there, you're going to see a lot of uh, three D-men showing up. So even in FanDuel now and some, I see uh, sometimes four D-men showing up just because they play more minutes, they have a higher floor. Those are cash game projections, obviously. Like I said, Derek Steppen. If you're looking for GPP, I like Nick Suzuki. Again, with his price point, uh, he doesn't really have the sh exact same shot volume as, say, like a Sorelli who's cheaper or Horvat who's just a little bit more expensive, but I love the pivot there. Shifley, I don't think we need to force. He's generally not a high shot volume guy, but has big upside against Ottawa, so I like that pivot off point. He's going to be much cheaper tonight and still in a great matchup. And then uh, Texier for Columbus, he's going to be like 1% owned. If you want to take a shot at a punt center, and I don't mind him, third line, second power play. Um, he's been hot to start the season, as you can see. Will that continue? Who knows? The shot volume's there for someone at his price on the third line, so I'm definitely on board. 
Jumping over to winger, I talked about Ratnan. If you're playing McKinnon, I'm playing Ratnan. I'm playing them together. Um, I'm all about correlation and cash. I'm looking for two or three two-man stacks generally. And then Kyle Connor, he's been red hot. He's even cheaper in that 7K range. He's you know he's playing like an 8K player, points in every game. He's got the shot volume there as well. He's playing over 20 minutes, five minutes on the power play per game. You couldn't ask for more. Kachuk hasn't exactly. He's got three points in three games. That's great, point per game. Um, not on Kyle Connor level, obviously yet, but the shot volume's higher, so that's good. Five combined shots blocks per game. Um, so that's really good for his floor against Winnipeg. I think that's, you know, they're only projected for 2.9 goals, Ottawa is, but uh, I think Kajuk can be involved in that. He is their leader on that top line, top power play. I don't think we need to force Stamkos. Even if you're playing point, I don't think we need to force Stamkos at his price. I'd rather go a little bit more balanced and get um, more shot volume. Like, as you can see, he's getting... Fifth. This is one of those things. Now, I talked about in the past comparing shots per game or shots per 60 to Corsi per 60 and Corsi is just shot attempts so to review shots is a shot that hits the net uh, a shot attempt is a shot that hits the net a shot that misses the net and a shot that is blocked so it's pretty much the full volume of shots so I will compare a guy that's getting a lot of shots on net to his Corsi to see if he's maybe running a little hot vice versa if a guy isn't getting a lot of shots on net but has a high Corsi we're probably going to see some positive regression in the shots and the usage this is a case where Stamkos is averaging pretty high here. Um, he gets a couple blocks, but it's mostly, he's about 4.8 shots per game right now. 15.9 um, shots per 60 on that scale, just comparing everyone a little bit closer. As you can tell, that is one of the best on the board. His Corsi is not as high. He's probably outside the top 10. If I if I sorted this and looked, he's probably outside the top 10 in Corsi. I think that shot volume is going to come down. This is why I'm not completely into paying up for him. In GPP, if you're playing point, you're playing Stamkos. Um, you stack them together 100%. In cash games, I don't think you need to. Brendan Gallagher, um, number three in my model here, coming all the way down, which is good to see. Uh, that's why he shows up green. So I'm really happy with my model on after, you know, this is only day two of using it. Um, but in terms of looking for guys for cash games with high shot volume, high time on ice, power play time, that sort of thing, it's really uh, working out nice so far in terms of the model with the guys that I would normally highlight anyway. So Brendan Gallagher, um, always shot volume. That goes back last year, year before. He's not going to be a 27 shot attempts per game type guy, but he's going to be a 21 to 22 at the end of the season somewhere in there, maybe even touch 23. So I definitely like that. I like the matchup versus Vancouver, like I talked about. Josh Anderson for Montreal as well. He's number six in the model. Um, he gets the shot volume. The, the time on ice isn't great, but he does get some power play time. The shot volume is what's key there, and the matchup. Um, he's just been playing really well online to and he's on the top power play so that stands out there miles wood's going to be in my core i'm probably going to change him to green um the only reason i haven't is because i discussed that game being like an under both teams offenses have struggled both teams defenses are elite um that usually tends to be like a one nothing two one type game but miles wood he's he's kind of got everything here he's got the shot volume um probably running a little bit hot on the shots right now um, but he's getting a lot of scoring chances, high danger scoring chances. Um, he's paid off on those, so he's probably running a little bit hot, but still, the price is very low. His best value is definitely on FanDuel at 4K. Going down even further, we got another value, Drake Batherson. Uh, we've been on him all year. The price still hasn't gone up. He's got uh, point per game pace, two on the power play, over six minutes per game on the power play across three games, five combined shots blocks, backing it up with the advanced stats here with the shots and the shot attempts. Um, he's even getting some blocks. He should be a $4,500 player on DraftKings and like 4K on FanDuel at least. But uh, first line top power play, like he literally checks every single box here. Um, so he's going to be a top value play tonight to really fit in those top guys because i think we can really go stars and scrubs again this continues the the prices aren't changing on these value guys with opportunity these guys are still getting opportunity so stars and scrubs it is um this is going to make getting mckinnon in probably pretty easy as i go through this video now and explain to you and go over some of these value plays and the situations they're in you can tell quite easily that uh that getting mckinnon is not going to be too hard 
I like Dadnoff as a pivot for Ottawa as well. Again, price hasn't gone up. He's getting a ton of opportunity on the power play. Um, too risky for cash, in my opinion, but all the opportunity in the world is there for GPP at his price, especially on DraftKings at 2900 On defense, this is one of the rare nights. I don't particularly like the top guys for cash games. Hedman, Makar, Petrie, they don't really back it up with a ton of shot volume, ton of blocks. Um, Hedman does, but he's the most expensive if you can get enough values other places, I'm fine with it, but uh, I love the value in the mid-range for cash games. Uh, it starts with Quinn Hughes. Sure, he's on the third line, um, but he's getting 24-plus minutes per game, so it's not really like he's third line or anything. He's on the top power play. He's got a point per game. He's just an assist playmaking machine out there, almost five minutes on the power play. Um, the floor is there. The course, he's, he's backing it up with the shot attempt slash coursey here. Um, so shot volume, time on ice, power play opportunity. Um, he's he's running hot, obviously, at a point per game. I don't think he's a point per game player by any means, but uh, the opportunity is there in a good matchup, and the price is right in that mid-5K range. Sam Girard would be my cash play over McCarr just because he's quite a bit cheaper. Getting similar opportunities um, has ex- pretty much exact similar op- numbers across the board. The shot volume is better. Um so I definitely like him for cash, Makar for GPP, because he's obviously, you know, rookie of the year and got a ton of upside. Going down further, probably in my number one defenseman in terms of points per dollar is going to be Adam Pellick tonight. Mostly for cash games, but just the with the price, especially on FanDuel, I think we can use him in all formats just to kind of use as a salary relief so that we can go out there and load up. Um He's top line, so he's only getting 19.7 minutes per game right now. That's just because he's not out there on the power play. He's not an Islanders power play, but the shots blocks, five-plus shots blocks per game, it's it's shot blocking. He's, a, he's an elite shot blocker. Um, and at that floor, if we can get somewhere in four-and-a-half to five shots, combined shots blocks per game from a guy in the 4,500 range and below on DraftKings or <clears throat> same on FanDuel, but he comes at 3,600. He's almost a must-play on FanDuel. Um, you're probably going to see him gain some ownership tonight. I like pivoting off of him to Letty for GPP. He gets the power play opportunity, just hasn't been as good in terms of his floor. Looking at the rankings, uh, we get a top 10 player down here. 3K range on both sites, um, Eric Cernick. Again, another player that doesn't get... Power play time, but he's still getting over 20 minutes per game. Um, He did get a little bit of power play time, but he's not listed on the power play. That's going to happen, obviously, very little. So don't count on him for power play upside for GPP. But he gets the shots, he gets the blocks uh, to give him a high floor, especially at that price. Four and a half combined shots blocks for a low 3K, high 3K on FanDuel price tag. That's a cash play for me. Um, So really, there's a lot of ways to go tonight. On defense, you can go Quinn Hughes and Gerard. That's not going to hurt you really at all. Um, you can go Pellick, who I'm probably going to be going with. You can go Pellick and up to Hughes. You can go Pellick and all the way down to Cernick if you want. Um, and then that allows you to go after McKinnon. And that allows you to go after, you know, pair him with Ranton and even get Kyle Connor in there, Brandon Gallagher. You can really start loading up your lineup. Um, Braden Point, you can get like four or five studs in there because there's three or four value plays punt plays i guess you could even call them because the price is not adjusting so keep that in mind um another thing as i go through and audit teams lines throughout the day i come to the depth chart tab here on the bottom and i highlight these teams so these teams in green have been audited today um so you'll see that every single day and you can kind of just hover over a team and click on it um and it'll take you down to the islanders they'll show you their power play line their regular strength or, or even strength line uh position and uh name over here So you can do that. Uh, Ryan's targets are up for the day, so make sure to go check that out. That is members only. Um, And then my stacks, I'll have a new top stacks tab down here at the bottom later on today. Just with a little bit of um, information, it's probably going to be three to four of my top stacks. Uh, Some of them might be the same team, but what I want to do is put salary beside them and then combine salary to kind of give you a look on FanDuel and DraftKings, which stacks are going to work better on which sites, um, just to give you that combined salary and percentage of overall salary that's going to be able to help you, you know, if you're playing both sites, which one's going to be better. Thanks for checking out the video. Again, 
Um, if you're not a member, go over to rotorpros.com, click on that sign up button, get your free trial, and use promo code RP50. And you're going to get 50% off after your trial is up. Uh, so if you're signing up for a year, that is a savings of $75 a year. Um, great value, guys. Get in, check it, join our winning team today.